So uh, yesterday, you were there, Will. You were there. I'm trying to talk about these phones right here. Yes. Uh, it was a big day. I guess when people are watching this, it might be a day and a half ago or something like that. But we did a live stream shortly after the event after the event ended for the Pixel uh, 7 Pro and Pixel 7 and also uh, the new Pixel Watch. A lot of cool new devices from Google. Now, uh, some may be wondering what, what happened to that video, to that live stream. Really, it's a, a miscommunication. That's all. Happens all the time in this business, Will. Does it? Yeah. Oh. We got to take a little bit of a blame there. We were uh, we were getting a little too excited, which might happen when you have a new smartphone. Uh -huh. And there's rules to this game, Will. So it's no big deal, though. Uh, I still wanted to give a couple initial thoughts on the devices, and I'm just going to have to be a little bit more uh, subdued for the time being until I have a little bit more time to uh, experience these new phones. So uh, the Pro model, starting at $899 USD, and the non-Pro around 599 usd to start we have two colors here that's the lemongrass for the pixel 7 and this is obsidian i believe so they're no longer i just realized something if you call this one obsidian it's no longer kind of the quirky uh just black remember that you remember or i don't remember, i don't know if it was black or blue or white where they had those type of names but they were quirky uh -huh. there's nothing quirky about obsidian no it's that, very uh tactical it's intense and uh yeah you're right well i think it'll be a uh, popular choice uh i also have to remind everybody we do have the later cases not just for obsidian but for all of the new pixel devices and you can pre-order them right now and the fit is unbelievable and the grip and the touch is on listen to this you see that that's satisfying right there uh, keep the fingerprints off your new um, Pixel 7 Pro. Uh, so anyway, yeah, check that, in the check that out in the description. Anyway, just a little bit more on what happened during the presentation as well since uh, our original clip got removed. Google's a software company, Will. And some of the stuff they showed off gets me going. It's one of these things where... You're horned up. It, well, I wouldn't go that far, Will. Jeez, coming off of our uh, <laughs> removal of the last one. Here we go. You're going in. Uh, there's something about a product improving over time via software. There's something about... Um, Making strides. It's kind of like magic. It's just in the background. Like, whoa, look how that worked. Uh, well, they use the word magic with the eraser, don't they? As far as removing people from a particular frame. Some of the stuff that they're doing with the Zoom, the camera system, particularly on the Pro model... Uh, some of the stuff with transcribing that I talked about, I will say this right now. The biggest thing I feel that I'm lacking using iOS, I'm currently using the uh, 14 Pro Max, voice and responsiveness to voice and accuracy with voice and the comprehensiveness of assistant. Just not quite there. Um cross-platform now this and this tensor chip is doing kind of all kinds of fancy stuff with retouching old photos um figuring out zoom beyond the optical range erasing things out of photos yeah the the magic aspect so they spent a lot of time on software and not as much on hardware the hardware has changed and they are different and that's another thing i want to recap really quick so the pro model has this kind of slim uh, edge attempting to make the thing feel smaller in hand than it actually is being the bigger of the bunch and then it's a little bit more blunted on the standard pixel 7 which has a slightly flatter edge also we have the matte finish metallic band no longer glass uh, but it, it is polished and chrome like on the pro model matte finish on the standard model uh, funny enough, it's kind of like an inverse because on the standard model, you have glossy or reflective buttons with a matte band. And then on the pro model, you have 
matte buttons on a reflective band. So they're kind of playing this tic-tac-toe. Oh, that's, if you will. That's definitely not what it is. But uh, this is an exclusive color as well for the standard model, this uh, lemongrass. And then there is an exclusive hazel, which has been getting a lot of love on the pro model. It's kind of a grayish hue with some gold-like accents, and people are kind of into that. $599, $899, these are relatively premium price tags. I guess the standard Pixel 7 goes more towards mid-range in North America for pricing. I don't know if the upgrade to the Pro model is necessary. I know around the office, the standard Pixel 7 has been getting love from the likes of Willie Do, from the likes of... Kirk uh, suggesting that it's kind of in the hand, a nice size. Um, you know, there's going to be differences with batteries and things like that. But this will all come further with testing. I'll be testing out the new video modes, cinematic, and so forth. So keep an eye on that on Unbox Therapy. And then the other one is the wearable. And look at me. I'm Mr. Wearable right now, Will. Uh -huh. If you can see that, I'm wearing things. Yeah, yeah. It's getting out of hand over. How many can I fit? <laughs> anyway, I'll get to the bottom of all this for you. That's why I, I wear the thing so you don't have to, or so you can eventually wear the one that's best for you, uh. possibly. A very organic approach to the, to the design with the Pixel Watch. Google has said that they wanted it to sort of uh, blend and then not be obstructive when it comes to like a long sleeve shirt or something lifting up over the top of it. It has an interesting design with the band, the way that it attaches, similar to a camera lens. Kind of just, uh, you, you, you click this release button, which is like part of the band section. I don't know if I have the hang of it yet. I'm close. I'm close to getting the hang of it. There you go. See the way that comes off? Uh, but the effect of it is that it kind of blends into the watch even more so, enhancing that organicness. This one's going to require a lot more testing. It is a, a unique in the space. Their approach with this really heavily curved edge, I think it might blend in a little bit more in terms of noticing it's there, certainly compared to this ultra thing, hmm. this ultra honker that I've been wearing, although normally I don't mind big watches because I have big wrists, which we've talked about on this show in the past. Anyway, I wanted to do just a little chat about it because yesterday or whatever the live stream uh went down but you can trust that i'll be i'll be goofing around and goofing about with the new pixel mm. and uh, the reason that the live stream went down was strictly due to the fact that there was overexposure going on on our end yeah you exposed a lot i was just i was just I, I was exposure happy i was like let me play with this thing and it happened to be live and sometimes you know there's no editing when you're live and and i didn't it didn't really give away that much but it was just beyond what uh what the uh, uh, capabilities were it happens for for us at the time what we were supposed what what our capabilities were supposed to be around the showcasing and it's fine and it happens and it's no hard feelings and that's why I just wanted to show these beauties off to you now, today, instead. Okay. Do we agree? Are we in agreement, Will? Yeah. We're in agreement. Squashed. <laughs> Squashed. Hey, man, when, if you say squash, <laughs> it means like there's a problem to begin. There's no problem. No, 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 no. I take it back. Been in this game for a decade. I've been in this game. Uh huh. Stuff yeah. happens, man. You, you, uh, you move, you move on, you move forward, don't you, Will? Yeah, I hear you. We have uh, some more to talk about today, including the recent release of editing for your tweets on Twitter. You love this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was never one of these guys that was obsessed with this thing. Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe I was just reading my tweets twice or maybe I didn't. It didn't bother me that much if there was uh, something wrong with a tweet. It did seem a little archaic. For sure, but it just it's not a thing that I thought about all that frequently. I just read the tweet twice and before I click send. Uh, but this was the most, by far, the most requested feature, I would imagine, uh -huh. besides uh, besides people trying to request to have Trump come back or something like that. <laughs> Did you hear these conspiracy theories, Will? 
uh, of I don't know, like that somehow that's playing into the negotiation of Elon's acquisition is like who comes back. Uh, what about the perma bans and things like this? Like that's somehow playing into the conversation. We'll get more. We'll get over there to that okay. topic later. This is about editing of tweets. Earlier this week, Twitter provided an edit button to Twitter blue users in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand and promised a U.S. expansion, which has come quicker than expected. The edit tweet button can be found alongside the already available delete tweet, pin to profile, change who can reply, and add remove from lists options. The test went well. Apparently, they like it. It's a Twitter blue feature for Twitter blue members. Uh-huh. So it's a paywall for editing your tweets. And we talked about this in the past, if you recall, like whether or not you thought that this would be worth it, uh -huh. whether or not uh, it was something you were willing to pay for. Because you tried out Twitter Blue for about five minutes and you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm not getting enough. I remember this conversation. You it and was I like uh, two, three bucks and I didn't find anything um, important about it. It doesn't really matter to me, but I think this this is good. Yeah. Well, now that you have this feature, you may, will you pay for it again? That's the main question. Because at the time, that feature wasn't there when you had Twitter Blue. It was just like super follows and things that you weren't really using. This is five bucks a month. Uh, and you can only edit up to 30 minutes after it's been sent. So you got to get to editing pretty quickly. Huh. Twitter Blue is priced at five bucks a month in the U.S. It provides access to ad-free articles, various customization options, a bookmarks folder, an undo tweet option, early access to Twitter features and more, and obviously the incoming edit button. Five I, bucks a month. Are you in, Will? I wouldn't get it for my own account. You're not. I don't it. really tweet that much, You're but maybe Lou later it. account. You're not into it. Yeah. There was something else that was like five bucks. It, it, it's an interesting uh, amount, five bucks. It's not 15, it's not 10, it's five. Per month, I yeah. think they think it's like a sweet spot. Like if I were to tell you it's two bucks a month, you go for it for the editing of the tweets. No. <laughs> okay, you're just out. You're just no, you're just like there's no amount. I do not need to be editing these tweets. Yeah. I think it should be free. Right. Yeah. But I mean Twitter needs money. They're trying to make money. They're trying to solve all this uh financing and this and that and avoid the 44 billion or whatever's going on with Elon. Who knows? I'm sure it's really helpful for a couple individuals. Well, listen, Elon has said if he acquires it, like that there has to be a movement away from a strictly ad-driven model. And this would be one of those ways. If you get enough people put paying five bucks a month, you can offset quite a, quite a lot of uh, advertising revenue, hence the ad-free aspect. YouTube has done similar with the premium. The recent conversation around YouTube uh, charging for 4K mm -hmm. as a way to enhance their premium offering, a lot of companies trying to diversify in the social media space, diversify their revenue streams mm. in order to uh, fortify their business model mm. models. Anyway, we'll see how many people take up Twitter on this offer. Uh, speaking of Elon Musk, his lawyers said Thursday that Twitter is refusing the billionaire's renewed $44 billion bid for the company and have asked a Delaware court to halt an upcoming trial Musk made a renewed offer to take over the company earlier this week. So, uh, so no trial. Let me buy it. And uh, back we're good. and forth and back and forth. You want, you don't want, you want for this, you want for that. What, where are we even at with this story at this point? Because it was off. It was like, we're going to court. I don't want it. Too many bots. Okay, cool. Uh, then it was, I don't want to go to court. I want to, you remember that Twitter thing? I want to buy it again. Let me buy original price. That was the other story. And then now the new one is you can't buy it. We, we refuse to accept the con, uh, contractual obligations. Or the, the, he, he refuses to accept. What? So anyway, they're going to proceed with the trial at this point. I don't know who's accepting what or not accepting what. I don't know if the argument over bots is still in there. I know this is going to be an expensive exercise. With the types of lawyers that are going to be involved in a situation like this. And it's very long and drawn out. And you just think that people might want to find a way around it. I, I was reading yesterday, I think, about the expanding list and the all-star team of investors that would be part of it with Elon to make it happen. And then I saw tweets from Elon himself saying uh, this will accelerate 
This will accelerate the growth of uh, the original vision of X, company X, X X.com. Did you read any of this stuff? No. Yeah, well, it was one of the replies. Somebody was speculating on why Twitter is important to Elon, and they drew a connection to other projects. And I don't know. You should be able to find it here. It might It might be... Well, it's tough when you, yeah, you're just going to search. You you would have to probably scroll for a while here. Uh, oh, it's a reply. That's why. It's going to be a reply. There you go. Why Elon Musk might rebrand Twitter using the X he's obsessed with. The next version of Twitter under Elon Musk management might say goodbye to the company's iconic bird. Okay, so probably the tweet is going to be embedded in this particular article. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Because uh, how many articles have been written around? Oh, there you go. Twitter probably accelerates X by three to five years. But I could be wrong, tweeted Musk on October 4th. October 4th, three days ago. It's been going on for a while. So he's had this X.com domain sitting around, burning a hole in his pocket. He wants to do something with it. Uh, He kind of referenced it as the everything app. I don't know if you followed that part of the story. I presume he wants to get just get more involved in your daily life hmm. and uh, protect that free speech or whatever, uh, whatever way you want to phrase that. The the public uh, discourse, the 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 public, uh, the town hall, the internet town hall, the discourse. Well, come on, you know what I'm talking Woke? about. Woke. Is that one I don't of the I think you're going things? somewhere else with no, that. Okay. I don't know where you're going. You think you're going somewhere else with that, but freedom of speech. Well, that was the what are we talking about here. <laughs> that was the that's the argument, right? It's like should Twitter be regulated? Can you if it, if it becomes the it's a private company so they don't have to do anything and then it's like but what if Elon owns it? Then what protocol does he follow regardless? Listen. Yeah. Listen here. The fact of the matter is apparently it's part of a bigger master plan like it is with most things, Elon. It's like, well, I did the car company so I could fund the space company and solar and the boring and company. It's like and, and then so they it's all like, come together. It's always some kind of 40 chess situation. And who knows what happens when Twitter becomes X, if it ever does. And then what the everything app from Elon even looks like. Sure. And whether you agree to buy into it at all. Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Saving you serious money. I don't know that we've ever played up that aspect before. The cost? With more choices every week and meals starting at $9.25 a person. The cost is an interesting one because you're out there with the fast food. Let me tell you something. You're spending more than $9.25 per person. Will, I've seen you do it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've seen you do it. And meanwhile, you could have had to call. Look at the chicken, the way it's roasted on the left over there. That's very juicy. Look at the way it's <laughs> Big fan. Look at the way it's roasted. <laughs> Look at that way it's roasted. Look at, they got the salt up there, but it's coarse. It was the coarse salt. Okay, yeah. See that picture? And there's some lemon over there. Very gourmet. Yeah, these are all the things you want in your life. You might be looking for a beef and pork bulgogi style bowl. That's a big emphasis on bulgogi. That's right. There's an wow. emphasis. Look okay. at the ground. Look at the ground. Uh, What's that on top of? Is that on top of like an orzo or something? Mm. Yes, that's buttery orzo. It's on top of. It's Hello Fresh, ladies and gentlemen. Go get yourself a lemon pepper meatball. Subscribe to Hello Fresh and check save money off your fall to do list. Hello Fresh has quick and easy meals like their 20 minute recipes or low prep and easy cleanup options. I mean you'll spend less time in the kitchen and more time with your loved ones. This week, I got the pork fajita bowls. And there's one thing that I noticed with HelloFresh meats. They're very lean. There's very little fat, which means you'll get a ton of flavor, but there's less grease and oil. This one was really flavorful, so go check it out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Lulater65 and use code Lulater65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Lulater65 and use the code Lulater65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Thank you to HelloFresh. We're also sponsored by Audible. It's time for you to listen to the good stuff. I like how they have the button there. It says try for 0.00. It doesn't say try for free. Uh-huh. I think that's actually even more approachable because you're, you're like, 
What does free mean anymore? You, yeah, do, do, do you believe it or? Dollar amount, very impactful. Dollar amount. You look at it and then they say right underneath $14.95 a month after 30 days, cancel any time. 30 days, you're listening to books. McConaughey, very impactful. And I'm saying after that, $14.95, I told you this before. I actually think there's value there. What are you paying for these books individually? Well, you never have to worry about that again. Mm because you're you're on the subscription and you're just in many cases spending less than what you would pay for one for the retail price of one of these now people obviously uh they they uh, may still feel that they like to have an actual physical copy of a book or maybe they want to have uh something on the kindle or something like this but you know where where the audiobook really comes into play for me is when I'm multitasking doing something else. Now, you know, people say you can't really multitask, there's no such thing. I'll tell you what, for me, I'm driving, no problem. Mm. For me, I'm driving and it might work for you. And if it does work for you, all of a sudden now you're reading all types of things that you wouldn't have otherwise had the opportunity to, to to read because of how busy your schedule might be. I don't know if your, your schedule is anything like mine. My schedule is hectic mm. like that mm. like the end of a breath when it's completely gone that's my schedule uh -huh. so if i'm going to listen to the thing that i want i got to make it fit and audible makes it fit thank you audible audible offers incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre from bestsellers new releases celebrity memoirs mysteries motivation wellness business and much much more all Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts that are included with the membership. You can listen to all you want and more get added every month. I've been listening to Animal Farm by George Orwell, and this is the version where it's a dramatic take. It's a very short listen, but it's also very fun. You can also check out Kevin Hart's Monsters and How to Tame Them on Audible. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash later or text Lou Later to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Lou Later, or text Lou Later to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash Lou Later. Go check them out. Uh, something that seems a little bit more near future, Tesla semi-truck coming in December with the first deliveries to Pepsi. Those are going to be some good-looking Pepsi trucks, I'll tell you what. Yes. Picture them all painted up. Uh, with the blue and the red in the futuristic electric truck. Excited to announce. Here's the tweet. Start a production of Tesla semi-truck with deliveries to Pepsi on December 1st. Uh, ready for all those Christmas deliveries mm. of uh, the beverages for the holidays. Uh, people have been waiting for this one for a while. It's less interesting to me than the Roadster or something or even the Cybertruck, but it does have massive implications. Delivery trucks put a ton of miles on the road. And obviously there's emissions involved and fuel consumption and big questions around the electrification of delivery vehicles at this scale. Pretty cool looking truck. What do you say, Will? I just noticed that the driver is in the center. You like that? Um, something to get used to, I guess. Well, the thing but, is, I mean, it's self-driving. That's what I was going to say. It's drive. What, it was it right? really He'd be sleeping in the back there. Well, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Got to monitor these systems. It was a joke. But it looks cool. I would like to see it in Pepsi colors when brands start branding their own uh, Tesla trucks. Oh, it's yeah. I wonder yeah. if there's any restrictions on what they can and can't do. Right. I wonder, but no, it, you got to be able to paint it because, listen, they're, it's a, these things are giant billboards that move around. I just saw the Coca-Cola one today. I mean, it wasn't a Tesla truck, but a regular truck, but with the Coca-Cola on the side. Mm. They're, 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 they're uh, moving billboards, Well, Yeah. So you got to have it. With the Tesla Semi expected to cost around 150000 with a tax incentive, tax credit up to 40000 per commercial clean vehicle. Look at these incentives. So uh, companies like Pepsi, they go pile in there. They get the 40, 40 grand tax credit and they're laughing and then they're cruising around in the cool trucks and they get a the couple stories and then you and i come on and we talk about we have a couple screenshots we're like look at the pepsi truck and then somebody buys some pepsi because they're not even sure why at that point how big is the nvidia rtx 4090 sized up next to the to xbox a banana and more can they put it next to a 3090 that'd be helpful for me oh my god it looks enormous next to that xbox uh. 
How about next to a two liter bottle of Pepsi Max? Are you trying to draw a thread here, a line from the Pepsi no, story? No, no, that accidental. It's apparently. the size of a two liter bottle, really. Why does the shape of that two liter bottle look weird? Is it taller? It's just and too long. Slender. I, I don't. I, I don't know. Let's see a banana because everyone knows it. Oh my God, that's not a huge banana though. Gonna say, I'm gonna guess. I'm looking at the stem. I'm looking at the proportions. Uh, what about the bigger? consoles like the xbox series x and the playstation 5 okay that looks a little Pretty bit close more to the xbox manageable well almost the exact same height so i guess that makes it a little bit larger than the 3090 definitely it's definitely a lot bigger i think yeah well and this is the stock cooler i guess there's going to be oh it's fat You're, it's no, fat it's fat yeah when you see it from this angle it dwarfs the brand new Intel Arc A770 Limited Edition. Then again, you could pick up four of the Intel cards for the price of one RTX 4090. Wow. So, it's a beast. You're going to have to upgrade your chassis here. You're going to need some space for this on either side. Yeah. Especially if you go with this particular cooler. And you're going to need some support for that baby right there. Mm-hmm. My goodness. I don't know about any uh, mini ITX builds. I'm not sure, no. Will. Yeah, no. No chance. What uh, what title are we going to throw at this card? What title are we going to be able to max out? Um, the 4090 is... No, no, no. Not the face. title of the video. Which game? Game title. Game title. Oh, yeah. Max? Um, cyberpunk. We're going to use Cyberpunk. We're going to go back to the Cyberpunk days. You keep saying that to me. You're like, Cyberpunk is still the title. It's coming back. Okay. All right. Well, you said it. I didn't. Yeah. Whatever you say, man. Meta's flagship Metaverse app is too buggy and employees are barely using it, says exec in charge. Everyone in this organization should make it their mission to fall in love with Horizon Worlds. You can't do that without using it. What is that, a Zuckerberg quote? I don't know who that quote belongs to, or is it one of these executives? Is that what the you headline is? fall implies? in love with this face, though? I'm in love. That's love at first That's, sight right there. Oh. That's love at first That's exactly what I look for. Yeah. Meta's VR social network, Horizon Worlds, the company's flagship metaverse app, is suffering from too many quality issues, and even the team building it isn't using it very much, according to internal memos obtained by The Verge. <laughs> In one of the memos the employees to employees dated September 15th, Meta's VP of Metaverse Vishal Shah said the team would remain in a quality lockdown for the rest of the year to ensure that we fix our quality gaps and performance issues before we open up Horizon to more users. Ooh. It hit 300,000 users earlier this year and is supposed to be coming to mobile and desktop via web version sometime soon, though Vishal's memos imply a web launch could be pushed back. You were doing the Horizon Worlds, if I recall. I tried it a little bit, yeah. and um, I said it here. Yeah. Um, instantly, there was bullying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just jumped in, and then some kid got bullied. Bullying in the metaverse. They were throwing balls at him. Future. Currently, feedback from our creators, users, playtesters, and many of us on the team is that we aggregate is that the aggregate weight of paper cuts, stability issues, and bugs is making it too hard for our community to experience the magic of Horizon. What do you think? They put it on hold? What's going to happen here? Well, freeze it. They're having like, um, I think in um, Horizon launch very soon in October for their new VR um, VR glasses, headset, whatever mm. it's called. Isn't it um, just another quest? It is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So I think that they're probably going to show off more Horizon stuff that could potentially be better. That yeah. looks like this. Right. Uh, yeah, hi higher quality. Well, it's true. He goes on Instagram and posts that, and everyone was like, whoa, whoa, that's quite different than what's out there right now. Yeah. But obviously a little bit more ambitious. Yeah, it's next week. Hmm. Zuckerberg himself was recently memefied after he posted a screenshot of his Horizon avatar to celebrate the launch of Horizon for Quest users in France and Spain. He had to quickly follow uh, post a follow up image with the better graphics. Listen, this project is so ambitious; oh, it's goodness. just yeah. unlimited. You gotta have questions. You have your concerns. 
you're Mr. VR, you're Mr. Meta, you're Mr. Zuckerberg, so... I think the product is good. I think the Quest the is the, really... You're talking about the, hard, the hardware. Yes. Okay. Um, whatever they did, like, just stick to that formula, because it's good. Well, you know... Make it cheap, make it... Zuckerberg has said that there there's some sort of philo philosophical war going on between or battle between Meta and Apple for like the future of metaverses. Uh -huh. If you had to bet today in 10 years time you're in a metaverse, who does it belong to, Meta or Apple? I would say um, long term Apple. Well, I said 10 years. Yeah. See, because the thing is, Apple isn't publicly working on this right now. I mean, they've shown things off in AR. But it is different. I think. But Meta at least has a headset at the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And you're talking about AR and VR and all that stuff. I think Meta is like really pushing like 24 7 in a headset kind of idea. Right. You work, you play in the headset. I smell that. I, I can like smell that already. Apple. Hopefully they don't. What does that, that smell like? You you live inside the headset, work, play. What does that smell like? I think it's a combination of yeah Cheetos. Oh and boy, sweat. Easy will. Okay, well. all right. Well, good luck. <laughs> Kanye is back in the news because he's doing interviews. Yeah. Um, I guess probably the highest profile interview has been released partly at the time that we're filming this, which is the first half of his interview with Tucker Carlson. And he talked about, I suppose, some controversial decisions and activities that he's been up to, opinions, um... Uh, pr primarily a t-shirt he was wearing at... Uh, Paris Fashion Week, I think it was Paris, w in which it said white lives matter on it. Mm. He talked about um, how he moves, how he doesn't listen to Hollywood, how he uh, thinks for himself, says what he wants and what he and what he feels. He said he had a feeling about this particular shirt that he was wearing, that it would be funny. He and also mentioned that his dad was the first Steve Jobs I don't know that he said it exactly like that. I'm paraphrasing. I don't know that he said it exactly like that, Will, but he did imply that his dad has a lot of good ideas and apparently he shared the White Lives Matter t-shirt or his dad saw it and, and wrote some uh, text message back with, with laughing and also found it to be funny. Uh, listen, he continues to find a way to, to, to get people's attention and to strategically move through the media landscape in such a fashion. Mm. It's always interesting to see where he pops up and what the uh, uh, most recent uh, conversations about. He's also wearing a lanyard here with a picture of an unborn fetus on it, which I don't know if he wears this around frequently or if this no. was specifically for the, uh, the interview. Other things I notice, the set looks very similar to uh, the last interview he did with, I, I think it was uh, CBS or ABC or something. So I'm, I'm curious what this set is that people keep getting invited to. And mm. I think you have to, you maybe you have to go to him these days instead of him coming to you, which is interesting to me. Mm. The hat that he's wearing says 2023 on it. Does that mean something, Will? Can you read into that? Quite possibly. I actually like the styling of the hat. It's similar to the hats that I like to wear, minus the 2023 like a plain sort of faded hat. He's got a whole new style going on. Sure. Um, but he does seem calm in this interview, and he seems like he's saying what he wants to say, whether people like it or not. I agree. And so we have a second part coming up, I guess, tonight. It won't be yesterday at the time that you're watching this. Who knows what they're saving for the second part? You presume they go in there and edit it. Maybe it's even more... Um, shocking, whatever takes place in the in the uh, second part. But he, uh, I think people are interested in what he has to say. I mean, that's the bottom line. People are, are definitely interested in what he has to say. He, regardless what you think of about him, he has had insight and perspective 
that many others haven't had access to. I mean, he's been in the Hollywood machine in a way that, well, I don't know, maybe nobody ever has before, mm -hmm. but certainly a very limited number of people. What is that worth? Well, that's up to you to decide, but there is certainly an experience and an insight there which is relatively exclusive. So people pay attention when these people, people like Kanye, appear to be coming off in an unfiltered manner, mm. in an unpolished manner, in a... Maybe more long form? In a seemingly authentic to them manner. Like I said, regardless if, of whether or not you agree with the stance, People are compelled by those that appear to be uh, taking a break from the polished presentation mm. of celebrity, which is everything's put together, following protocol, being less controversial, and so forth. So, I don't know. There's really... It's, it's, it's hard to... Uh, analyze the first half of this and, and or try to figure out what the motive is like beyond just talking like I'm curious what the goal is he's got the 2023 on the hat he brought up Trump again there, there's got to be more to the story here you're going on Tucker Carlson we're missing pieces here Will and yeah. but they, they will be uncovered in time I'm sure mm -hmm. but there's many stances there's many stances in there sure yeah many stances Super Mario Brothers uh, movie official trailer. You hmm? very pumped up about this. This is all you've been talking about. Super Mario Bros, this and that. I heard that he's missing his butt or something. Is that real? I saw that on no, Twitter. No, he, he has a big butt. Oh. It goes up all the way up to his armpits. And that's oh. why people were confused In interesting can i watch this i can watch this they i don't think you well i can watch it they just they can't watch it yeah. right copyright you can let me watch it can't you uh, do you have the means for that yeah we or can you can just it. scrub you can scrub to, <laughs> to key moments i uh, we, we can you can Should scrub. We just cut like the, the no just you can just scrub to key moments that's fine too okay you well. just give me a look at what i'm dealing with here you got this i see a kingdom oh that Bowser right there? That that lava. Oh, that might be. Is Bowser made of stone? That's his, I guess, fortress, right? Holy moly. Because in the dun, game. Dun, dun, da, 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 dun, 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 da, 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 This is dun. one of the kingdoms. Which paint, this trailer paints a really good picture of the Mario world, I think. You're a big world guy. Because we always talk about yeah. the, the mushroom kingdom. Yeah. Right, but there's other kingdoms out there, and immediately you're that, damn right. There's other kingdoms out yeah, there. This is a whole a universe. Mario world. Everything you know? is a world and a universe these days. Yeah. Right. It's um. What is the Marvel called? MC. What is it? Called? MCU. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the C character? Marvel Cinematic. Cinematic Universe. universe. <laughs> so this is the uh, what is this? This SCU, the Super Mario sure. Cinematic Universe. It's bigger than you think. All of a sudden, you start finding out about some comic book that was written in 1972 with a character that was never properly explored. Yeah. Um, a plumber. A plumber with a, an Italian plumber named Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Rescuing princesses. Man, what a throwback. Nostalgia. And, yeah, I just keep thinking about that and... They actually made a movie out of it. They you know? made a movie out of they it. They crafted a story. They did. And Bowser has a voice. He wow. doesn't just grunt. Wow. And Mario is, um, his voice is Chris Pratt. So there's no live action elements. The whole deal is animated. I believe so. It's not one of these ones where they try to insert a human at some point. I don't think so. It's fully Mario. We're fully immersed in the universe. Yeah, and the animation is obviously really great. Yeah, I see lighting and all the stuff you're looking for. All the, all, I, I see the RTX in it. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> ray tracing. <laughs> um, Whoa, see, he has no butt. What are you talking about? That's what the people are talking about. Apparently. Oh, yeah, okay. Apparently. Well, there's another shot where his I don't know butt what the is like I don't know what people up wanted. to his armpits. I don't know what people wanted. I think he looks all right. He looks good. He sounds good. Oh, yeah, good. see, they wanted a bigger butt than that. 
Oh, okay. But I don't know. They, I think they try to make it, they tried to mix like cartoon with real, the stylings here. Yeah. You know sure. what I mean? Like it's the head is obviously bobblehead, but then other proportions and lighting and reflections and stuff have a reality shininess and uh, a reflectionness to them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I'm not mad about it. I'm, yeah. I think this is nice. This is old school, nostalgic, but very, also very colorful, kind of fun. You okay. Know? So are you, is this a, is this an in cinema moment for you? Yeah. You're going to the cinema for it's, Mario. Uh, this was my first video game. So yeah, definitely nostalgia. Is wow. A, well, this is, uh, we're going to need to get a report back from you on this at some point later in this show. Uh, I watch it down, with Mo. Down the road. Yeah. Uh, we're going to, we're going to get, you're going to break it down for us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Last one. Uh, this drone flight through Chicago's Wrigley Field will make anyone a Cubs fan. Ooh, look at the drones going through the a fire truck around the stadium. This is a, such a, oh, the old scoreboard. What are the oldest stadiums in sports, really? I don't know what year it was built. Huh. Maybe I can find out early 1900s. Maybe it says here. But I love that these things hang around, that they don't just rebuild everything. There's been so many new stadiums recently. Mm. Uh, but you have Fenway, you have Wrigley, and they're just, it's so historic. You got to maintain these type of things. And not everyone's going to have a chance to visit there. So this drone definitely gives you uh, the feeling of being like, in the atmosphere or sure, environment yeah. on game day. And, of course, I had to pay attention to the training facility when it went through there. I was like, let me see what they've got going on in there. Yeah. In the training facility. But, look, it's a whole atmosphere even outside the park mm -hmm. uh, leading up to the game. Got the water park for the kids. There's a little turf area. There's live music. What do you think? You feel like going to the ball game, Will, or what? I like this. This yeah. is really fun. Yeah. It paints a whole picture of a vibe. Oh, it's absolutely and a vibe. there's history and, obviously, the technical aspects of drone flying mm -hmm. um i i wonder if this was one take and it's not but they make it very seamless so were you able to find where the cut happens there's a couple of cuts okay yeah but the way that they do it you don't you're not wasted in like the experience you're not taken out of it so it's it's got to be one of the quickest smoothest ways to get an entire tour of the stadium yeah right no person like how would you replicate this without a drone you wouldn't like this right. this drone is just moving and grooving smoothly through all the attractions including getting access to areas that you can't or mm -hmm. probably won't oh it buzzed past that guy's head he had to be briefed in advance oh yeah. close to his head <laughs> He must have been briefed in advance. It's coming through now. Three, two, one. And then he, it's choreographed. He goes for the, the <laughs> did walk. You, did you see that? Yeah. What, polishing the trophy? Oh, that was a cut. That, yeah. Yeah. That's okay, Will. No, nothing wrong with it. It's okay, Will. Come on. I, I like the We're fact not going to go the, cut hunting here. This is wonderful no, piloting no, no. going on. This is... Uh, not at all. Beautiful stuff. I like the cavernous areas, like deep in the yeah. building like this. Executive hallways yeah we're into the locker room and uh, the training thing is coming up here pretty soon which was my favorite aspect it's right yeah. right around here i just i also just love how the activity doesn't stop they're all ignoring the camera and the drone you know they've mm -hmm. all been briefed ignore the drone when it gets near you yes so that it seems more realistic mm -hmm. like i don't think i can catch one person looking at it Oh, never mind. That guy was just recording it. But most people <laughs> are not. Like, and uh, they timed it right as they're coming out onto the field. It's lovely yeah, stuff. Good stuff. Business as usual. And then the, the stands are full and uh, lovely execution. Awesome. We're about to start the playoffs here, actually. Uh, we started the playoffs here 56 minutes ago. Oh, okay. I got to check what the Jays are up to. I'm, let's check right now. Oh, no. Losing 3 nothing. Ah! They'll come back. Oh, man. Top of the third. I sure hope they do. Uh, Kirk is at the game right now. Kirk, okay, you, yeah. Kirk, you best be cheering. And whoever's watching this already knows the outcome. But yeah, exactly. Let's go, Jace. All right. Later, guys.